So, before looking at the math, we will look at some cool stuff about GANs and I will ask you a question at the end of it related to your latest assignment and so just listen carefully. Okay? So, these are some what I have shown here is actually a 4 oh no, 5 cross 10 grid. So, there are 5 rows and 10 columns. Okay? Now, look at one row at a time. So, in each row the first image was generated by sampling some z1. Okay, so, you took some z1, fed it to the train generator and it generated this image. The last image was generated by some other z2. Okay, you took a z1, you passed it to the generator, that is the first image that it gave or the first image that you see is the one generated by z1. Similarly, the last image that you see is something generated by a different z2. Both z1 and z2 were randomly sampled from the normal distribution. Okay. Now, an interesting thing that these guys did is they took all z's by interpolating z1 and z2. Okay, what does interpolation mean? Take this kind of a combination, right? So, lambda times z1 plus 1 minus lambda times z2. So, these are two points z1 and z2. So, an interpolation will give me all the points between them. And of course, this is happening in a higher dimension and not just in a one dimensional or two dimensional case. Does that make sense? Okay. So, now here is the idea right you take a z1 you take a z2 these are the two images that it generated now you take all vectors which come between them and try to generate images from them right and remember that there was a smooth transition from z1 to z2 in the latent space because you are doing this interpolation now you would expect a similar smooth transformation in the image space also and that is exactly what is happening here right so you had this bedroom and you had this another bedroom and now you are feeding z's which lie between this first z1 and z2 and you see a smooth transition from the first bedroom to the second bedroom. Do you see that? How many of you get this? Can you relate this to your RBM assignment? This question was not asked, but can you relate this to your RBM assignment? How could you plot a similar plot for your RBM assignment? The answer is given on the slides. Just do these three things, right? So, you will get a z1 if it were mnist digits right so take a z1 which results in a 1 suppose it draws a digit 1 take another z2 which suppose results in a 9 suppose now if you interpolate between these two you should see a series of images which allow you to transition from 1 to 9 does that make sense does that make sense so if you want you can try this for your fashion mnist data so this is not a part of the assignment but just if you want you can try right so this is some interesting stuff that you can do and see how the output comes and a lot of these transformations are actually very interesting. So, it may not be clear in the images here, but you can go back and look at the slides. The other stuff that you can do is something similar to what we had in the case of word to vec where you had this king minus man plus woman is equal to king minus man plus woman is equal to king, okay, if you say so. Okay, yeah. So, something similar, right. So, what is happening here is if you look at these first three images, they were generated by some vectors z11, z12, z13. Okay. And we just observed the images, we as in the authors of the paper, which does not include me. So, they just observed the images and saw that all of these are smiling women faces. Okay. So, what they did is they took the average of these vectors and came up with this average z1. And they fed to that to the generator and it gave some average smiling woman. Okay? And no, I mean do not, I mean the average is being used in a very different <laughs> way here. Okay? And the same thing for the second row, right. So, you have the z21, z22, z23 and you get an average neutral woman. Okay? And the same for the third row. So, now you have this z1, z2 and z3 which re represent the averages of smiling neutral man and smi smiling woman, neutral ma woman and neutral man. And now you do some vector arithmetic on top of that. So, you do z1 minus z2. So, you remove the woman part of it. So, you just get smiling. Okay? And then you add a man to it and then you get these creepy looking smiling men. right? So, so that is the vector arithmetic that you can do on the latent space. Right? 
So these are interesting things that you can try once you have trained the model. And here's another example, right? You take a man with glasses, man subtract the man without glasses from it, add a woman, and then you get some stylish looking women with glasses, right? Okay. So this is the quality of the generated images that people hype about. Okay. Uh, Fine. So that's uh, some cool stuff, and there are like tons and tons of applications that people have come up with to use GANs for. This is just from one single paper. You can go back and Google for GAN Zoo, and you'll find like some million papers, not million actually, hundreds or thousands of papers written on different types of architectures for GANs, different applications for GANs, and so on. And it's just enormous. The amount of literature that has come up on GANs in the past four years since it was introduced. It's just mind blowing, right? And there are several applications. So one of this is that we are thinking about taking a random vector and generating an image from it. But how about these other applications that you take one image from one domain? So this is an image from the segmented domain, and actually translate it to a real image, right? Which has the road and everything properly coming up. Same here, right? So you have this. Uh, the architecture, just the blocks given for it, and from that you actually come up with the building which was there. Of course, you'll have this parallel data for training, but now from a latent variable or from a random variable, oh sorry, a random vector going to an image vector, now you're going from one image to another image, right? And there could be various things here, right? So you could take black and white images and convert them to color images. This is again interesting. You take the satellite image and you give back the Google map for that area. And from day to night, from sketch to actual images, and so on. There are tons and tons of applications which have come up in this space. So I encourage you to go back and look at those. 